All right, let's have prayer for our, our, our veterans here. Thank God for them, and then we'll uh, move on with our service, all right? Father, we thank you this morning for our country. We thank you for our freedoms. We thank you for our Constitution. Lord, we thank you for our founding fathers, and we thank you for the freedom and the uh, wonderful country that we have to live in here. We thank you for these men and women, uh, Lord, these veterans as well as many, many others that uh, put their life on the line. In some cases, uh, Lord, we're willing to put their life on the line in all cases, and to serve our country, and to protect uh, us, Lord, so that we could keep the freedoms we have. God, we pray a special prayer of protection for these men and women on this platform today. Continue to bless their lives, guide them, uh, watch over them, Lord. Give them special blessings from on high, Lord, just because uh, of the fact that they were willing to fight for our freedoms, please. Uh, Lord, we pray you'll continue to bless our nation, continue to bless our military, uh, bless our veterans across this country. And Lord, again, we ask a special blessings uh, for these veterans here that are on this platform and represent our church, Lord. We're so thankful for them. May we never forget the sacrifices made. May we never forget, uh, Lord, the honor that's due to these men and women who have served. Bless them now, Lord, we pray. Bless their family as well. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can take a seat. Thank you again so much. change on that screen till he's there. <laughs> Isn't it good to see all these young people in church this morning? Amen. Fantastic. Amen. If you would turn in your hymn to hymn 621, tell me the old, old story. Sing it. 
church me the old old story tell me the old old story of jesus and his love and to eternal day him 611 he hideth my soul in your bulletin today. We've got quite a few and some new ones that maybe we haven't talked about before. Ladies' dinner is coming up on Thursday, November 12th. And bring finger foods to share and it's going to be a fun time over in the fellowship hall. Christmas shoe boxes. Well, we've talked a lot about that announcement and it's winding down pretty fast. Next Sunday is the uh, deadline for bringing your boxes back. Uh, when your box is filled, just return it here. If you'd like to help with the shipping of the boxes, there's a donation box to uh, put your donation in, and the church will write one, um, one check for the shipping. Men's breakfast coming up on the 21st. Um, I heard something about cinnamon rolls, but you'll, I guess, have to take that up with Mona. <laughs> I think several already have, so there you go. Um, there's a communion service is coming up. Um, Thanksgiving time is a wonderful time, of course, to be grateful and so thankful for what the Lord has done for us. 
uh, communion will be held on Tuesday, November 24th, 7 p.m. here in the church. And then that week, the Wednesday Bible study um, will be recessed. And speaking of Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving dinner uh, hosted so graciously by the Pleps every year. They're going to be doing that again uh, November 26th, of course, 2 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, sign up in the lobby uh, if you're planning on uh, bringing a covered dish. Um, there's also a note here to indicate how many will attend with you and also what type of food and maybe about how many it might serve so we have an idea. We want to have enough, of course, and we will. Uh, decorating for Christmas, hmm, that's come about fast, hasn't it? But plan to come on Saturday, November 28th, 8 o'clock. Friends, that is a fun time when we drag out all the Christmas decorations and we put fall things away and get our, our sanctuary and our, our church decorated up for the Christmas holidays. We have a good time and um, there's a little note on there that says there may be donuts, but Cliff didn't really like that word may. He said that's got to be there will be donuts, so <laughs> we're going to see to that I'm sure. <laughs> um, uh, also, uh, the, pick up your copy of the Baptist Bread out in the this, uh, lobby. They're a wonderful little devotional book that you'll enjoy using. Other November activities down in the box with birthdays uh, coming up. Also, I wanted to remind you of choir practice. It's uh, 515 on Sunday Eve five. after 5? We, we until Christmas. Okay, booted it up to 5. So be here at 5. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of Christmas music being uh, prepared and that's going to be a good time too. So I uh, plan to come for our evening services on uh, Sunday nights and Wednesday nights as well. Also I have a little note from uh, Pat Myers. She said the Benson Community, uh, uh, the Benson Chamber of Commerce is hosting a Christmas off Main on Saturday December 5 and there's also uh, going to be a caroling group uh, Pastor Diaz of the Grace Chapel is putting together a group of people to go caroling on that day. Uh, the group is called a Joyful Noise, so that sounds like anybody and everybody could come and be okay. So, but more information about joining that group, call Pat Myers and she'll be glad to give you some, some information to join. It'll be a good time. Just real quick, I want to follow up on her choir practice announcement. Uh, they moved it to five on Sundays for the choir to practice their songs for the next Sunday. And at approximately 525, 530, they were going to be practicing for the Christmas songs that they would do for Christmas. If you could help just be in, you say, I can't do it weekly, but I'd be happy to sing for the Christmas songs. I already recruited a few of you last week. Do I need to remind you who you are? I'm just kidding. You know who you are. Uh, if you show up about 525-ish, uh, we'll start practicing Christmas right after that. So uh, we could use a couple more male voices. We'd love that, but also some females. So if you just want to do the Christmas portion and join us for the Christmas songs, we would love to have you that way as well. I didn't mention that to Kathy for the announcement, so I wanted to clarify that. So we could use you for full, all, full time or part time. Good choices, right? All right. So if you can help me with just the Christmas, we appreciate that as well. So Frank, come on back. We'll turn to him 574 574 a child of the king aren't we glad we're a child of the king my father is rich in child of the king, a child of the king, with Jesus my Savior, I'm a child of the king. My father's own son, the Savior of men, once wandered on earth as the Yeah. 
I'm going to put my music up and excuse it me because I either had to do five pages this way or three tall ones, so it'll be covering up my face. So you'll hear me, but you won't see me. But um, I wanted to take this minute to just thank everybody for all their prayers. Amen. You don't know how much that meant to me. I just, um, I just thank you so much. And I picked out this song today not only because of the problems I've had, but because of the year 2020. <laughs> and I just think it's really appropriate. And so just listen to the words. I don't know how I'll do because it's been a long time. I'm still getting better. So, But I hope I can get through it without crying because the words are really great. So. Oh, wait a minute. I can't sing it up there. I never said that I would give you silver or gold or that you would ever feel the fire or shiver in the cold but I did say you'd never walk through this world alone and I did say don't make this world your home I never said that fear wouldn't find you in the night or that loneliness was something you'd never have to fight but I did say I'd be there by your side and I did say I'm sorry I'll always help you fight cause I know I made a promise that I prepared <laughs> I'm gonna start over it sorry <laughs> Cause you know I made a promise that I intend to keep. My grace will be sufficient in every time of need. My love will be the anchor that you can hold on to. This is the promise, this is the promise I made to you. I never said that friends would never turn their backs on you or that the world around you wouldn't see you as a fool. But I did say, like me, you'll surely be despised. And I did say, my ways confound the wise. I didn't say you'd never taste the bitterness of death or have to walk through chilly Jordan to enter into rest but I did say I'd be waiting right on the other side and I did say 
I'll dry every tear you cry. Cause you know I made a promise that I've prepared a place and someday sooner than you think you'll see me face to face and you'll sing with the angels and a countless multitude. This is the promise, this is the promise I've made to you. So just keep on a walk and don't turn to the left or right. But in the midst of darkness, let this be your light. That hell can't separate us and we're going to make it through. This is the promise. This is the promise I've made to you. This is the promise. This is the promise I've made to you. That's a fitting reminder. I know you've been through a lot this year. We appreciate you bouncing back and God being good to you through it all. Thank you for singing for us this morning. What a blessing that was. And that's a good, uh, again, a good reminder for 2020 for sure. And uh, amen. Ready for 2021. Amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss our uh, young folks at this time, kindergarten through sixth grade. If you'd like to make your way out with Miss Julie, she's going to go over to Junior Church. And uh, Teresa, would you would you slip out and help her today, please, if you don't mind? Thank you, ma'am. I meant to talk to you before, and I forgot to grab you. So thank you. All right. If you if you if you feel like you're in uh, sixth grade, you can go. No, I'm kidding. If you wish you were back in sixth grade, no, I don't. I don't wish that on anybody. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. We'll give them a minute to slip out. And if you want to find in your Bibles this morning, 2 Timothy chapter 2, please. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Bye. <laughs> I got one telling us bye. Bye. <laughs> Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And this morning I want to look at a, just a couple of verses here in Timothy. And in two verses we're going to get a sermon today. It's not a very good one. Uh, you can see the bulletins has got four blanks for you to fill in. Sorry about that. But uh, it's all right. Um, we want to look at uh, the topic of what makes a veteran today. And of course, uh, keying in off of Veterans Day coming up Wednesday as well as the uh, veterans, the men and ladies that we just honored a few moments ago. And so we want to look at this uh, this scripture here, and uh, hopefully just give us some things to think about this morning. Um, so if you found Second Timothy chapter 2, if you're able to this morning, would you stand with me out of respect for the reading of God's Word? Again, we'll read just verse 3 and 4. If you don't have a Bible with you, it is up here on the screen. You can follow along there. And so let's look at this together this morning. The Bible says this, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And I want to look at that passage this morning, hopefully be a help and an encouragement to us today. Let's pray together, and uh, we'll have you be seated. Father, we thank you this morning for your love and goodness. Thank you for the service so far, the singing and the time we've had just to worship and lift up your name through song. Lord, thank you for the special and the reminder of that promise uh, Lord, you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, even in the valley of the shadow of death, you're there with us. You guide us, you lead us, you love us, you help us. We're so thankful for that. Father, we open your word now for the next few minutes. I just pray that you'll bless the preaching this morning. Uh, may it be a help and an encouragement and a challenge to us. May it remind us of some things and challenge us for some future things, I pray. Uh, Father, if there's one in our service that does not know thee as their personal Savior, God, I pray that today would be the day they recognize their, their need for you and your love for them. And they give you their heart and their life today, we pray. 
Uh, Father, bless this time now, we pray. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. In many churches today, just like ours, behind me stands two flags, the American flag and the Christian flag. Each of these flags represents a type of freedom. One flag is the freedom that allows us to go where we want to go, say what we want to do, uh, do what we want to do, live where we want to live, dream big dreams and pursue them, and nobody can tell us we can't. Somebody wrote one time, it's the veteran, not the reporter, that's given us the freedom of the press. It's the veteran and not the poet who has given us the freedom of speech. It's the veteran, not the campus organizer, that's given us the freedom to assemble. It's the veteran and not the politician who's given us the right to vote. And it's the veteran, not the preacher, who's given us the freedom of religion. As you think about that, our, our wonderful American flag right here represents those freedoms. But you notice standing beside our American flag is that sister flag, the Christian flag. Centuries, uh, centuries and centuries, veterans have sacrificed so much to, per, uh, to preserve our freedoms as American citizens. Part of those freedoms is the God-given right to worship our Creator anytime, any place, anywhere, any way, and in what seems fit to us without the government interfering. Amen and amen. That God-given freedom to religiously assemble and meet and worship God is also represented then in the sister flag, the Christian flag. That freedom that we have can only be found in Jesus Christ. Like the veteran who gave his life in the battle, Jesus Christ, of course, gave his life uh, as a ransom for many. The freedom that we have in the American flag, what it represents is the freedom from uh, a life of futility, freedom from the tyranny of sin, freedom from regret, freedom from hate, freedom from bitterness, freedom from, uh, from the past. Amen. It's the freedom to love God and to love people as he commands us to in Scripture. If you serve either of these flags, the American or the Christian flag, all the, the freedoms that they represent, if you truly serve either one of those flags faithfully and effectively, there are some requirements that have to be met. Before one can become a veteran, he first has to become a soldier. Right? To become a veteran usually requires you to be a good soldier. <laughs> okay? Uh, so there's some stipulations there, if you will. My question today is this, and kind of the title of our message, what does it take to make a veteran? And I want to focus our attention, yes, on our, on our military uh, veterans, our American veterans, but I also want to look at the opposite side of that, or the sister side of that, if you will. What does it take to not just be a military veteran, but what does it take to make a spiritual veteran? The Apostle Paul, as he writes to young Timothy, he knew something about being a spiritual veteran. Uh, having enlisted in the Lord's army after encountering, uh, encountering Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. And of course you know he used to be Saul and he encounters Christ on the road to Damascus. And that light shines and Jesus gloriously saves Paul. He changes his name to Paul. He becomes, instead of a persecutor of Christian, he becomes a preacher of Christ. Amen. What a change. By the way, when Christ saves you, he changes you. If there's no change, we wonder did he actually get a hold of us. Amen. Uh, and he drastically and dramatically changed the Apostle Paul's life. Uh, he, uh, in this uh, new life that he had, we have to understand this about the Apostle Paul. Uh, because of the change Christ made in him, giving him this spiritual veterancy, if you will, uh, he faced a whole lot of difficulties. Think about it. Paul was beaten. Paul was shipwrecked. Uh, Paul was imprisoned, uh, Paul was hated, uh, Paul was, uh, had false rumors spread about him. At the end of his life, while facing execution, for one reason, commitment to Christ. By the way, let me take a little pause out, T time out here for a minute, okay? We should cut the camera here for just a minute, I don't know, but this is free, okay? Christian in America better wake up, Okay? We're not under direct persecution now. We do see persecution in certain areas of Christianity. But let me tell you something. It's coming. God's been preparing the church through 2020. I hate to say it, Mona. has bad, bad, bad things. He's also used it to prepare the church for something coming. And we better be prepared 
to say, oh, I'll die for Christ. Are we really willing to? You say, Pastor, this is America. I understand that, folks. But, but we have to understand as we read Scripture and we read the end times, we understand some things that are going to take place. Are we truly ready, like Paul was, to say, I'll die for Christ? He's sitting in a Roman cold prison cell, cut off from the world. He has two things to his name, a parchment and a quill. And he takes that parchment and he quill and he writes these encouraging letters to churches and to Timothy. And he tells them all these things. And what he's doing in Timothy is he, he's passing the mantle. He's passing the church. He, he's telling Timothy, I'm about to die and I'm fine with that. By the way, what does he say? I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord is going to give me. He's prepared. So he's telling young Timothy, Hey, Timothy, you better put your big boy britches on. It's about to get real for you, son. You're going to go out. You're going to pick up my mantle. You're going to preach Christ like I preach Christ. And you're going to suffer just like I suffered. Be ready. Be ready. And he gives Timothy this advice. Matter of fact, of the verses that we read, he compares this living Christian life, he compares it to the military soldier. And he tells young Timothy, you best be ready for a battle. And Christian, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in just a minute, but I'm just going to prepare us for this, okay? We best be ready as Christians for a battle. Uh, we better be ready. Uh, Paul's warning young Timothy, and he's telling him this, and he's encouraging him to keep the faith and to be strong and to be a soldier. In two short verses, Paul gives us four different aspects of what makes a, what makes a veteran. Now, I'm going to give you these four aspects real quick. I have no subpoints this morning. I have no additional scripture. We're just going to look at this one passage. I'm going to give you four quick words. Um, again, it's a terrible outline, but I think it'll hit the mark and do its, uh, hopefully fulfill its purpose. Okay. So let's look at these four words that Paul gives us in these verses, what he's talking about. Everyone starts with the letter E. The first one I put down to the word enlist. Enlist. You can't become a veteran if you don't become a soldier. You can't become a soldier if you don't enlist. Aren't you thankful, hey, folks, aren't you thankful that the mandatory draft isn't here anymore? Okay? You say, well, 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 we need that. Think about it. What does it require to enlist today? Willingness, first of all. Okay? You, you, you join the military because you want to. You're, you're, you're willing to. Does that make sense? You're not forced to. That's enlisting. Uh, you have to be willing to be involved. Uh, you have to be motivated to stand for a cause. Uh, again, I'm thankful we don't necessarily have a forced draft anymore. I know we have recruitment officers, right? And sometimes it feels like you're being forced. But uh, they, they know what they're doing, and they go out and they uh, present the military to families, and they try to recruit and all that type of thing. But still, uh, there, there's, there's, there's got to be a willingness to get involved. Men and women have the freedom to choose whether or not they will serve in our armed forces in the military. And people make that choice for a variety of reasons. Some people join the military because they come from a military family, right? Some people join the military because they get free college, okay? Some people join the military because they feel it's their American duty, okay? For a variety of reasons. Uh, some, some join the military because they're looking for some sense of direction or structure in their life, amen? I know sometimes you look at some of the kids in the world and they say, man, they need to join the military, get some instruction in their life, right? <laughs> there's, there's a variety of reasons, okay? Uh, but they enlist. Uh, when, they, when, they list and when they enlist and they make that tough decision, here's what we do know. It's a life-changing choice. It's life-changing. Think about our, our, our soldiers when they enlist. They, they leave home. They leave life as they knew it behind. They leave many times family behind. And they, and they join a brand new lifestyle. Something totally, to, totally different. You know, I thought about that phrase of enlisting in the military today. Do you realize to be a veteran, spiritually speaking, and to serve in the army of God, it also requires us to enlist? You realize that God will not force you to serve him? And God will not force his son, Jesus Christ, upon your life? He gives us choice. He gives us free will. God, instead of saying, you will love me, I'll make you a robot so that you do, God says, I'd rather you love me because you want to. I'd rather you serve me because you love me. And so there's some enlisting uh, in the spiritual force, if you will. He does not force anyone to serve him in his kingdom. He does, uh, however, I will say this, I saw this likeness as well. He does send out recruitment officers, amen? 
<laughs> I'm not the only one, though. We, we ought to be encouraging each other and others to get involved in the service. So we recruit. There's some recruitment going on. Amen? <clears throat> Excuse me. When you, when, you, when you find a good restaurant, what do you do? You tell people. <clears throat> Excuse me. You find a... <clears throat> Excuse me. You find yourself preaching and you get COVID all of a sudden. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> I just choked. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> you know, you find a good item that you buy and a good deal. What do you do? You tell somebody. I bought... Hey, folks, I bought a 65-inch TV the other day for $228 at Walmart. <laughs> Who asked me that? <laughs> you at, at Walmart, all right? And I was like, what? And I told I told everybody. I told people I was walking out of the parking lot. Look at that TV. They're like, that guy's weird. Whatever. You tell people. Folks, we've got the greatest thing on planet Earth. We get to serve the King of Kings. We get to live for Jesus. We get to escape hell. We get an eternal home in heaven. We get a comforter inside us. We get a book to guide us. We get a church family that loves us. We ought to tell people about it. What are we doing? We're enlisting. We're enlisting. <laughs> We're recruiting. Maybe you're, maybe you're in church today because uh, you were brought up by church family. Your parents were Christians. Your parents had you in church and that type of thing. That's fine. Maybe at a time in your life you were by yourself and you sensed God leading you to church. Maybe you came to church looking for direction or purpose. Whatever the reason you're here today, whatever the reason you're in God's army today, hey, it doesn't matter the reason. Be thankful that you were able to enlist. I'll say this today. Uh, Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 14, following him is a life-changing decision. Thank you, Bonnie. Come a little farther so you're on camera. Come on, come on, Bonnie. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I just wanted to embarrass her. That's Bonnie, everybody. Give Bonnie a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> That's why people don't volunteer, because I embarrass them. <laughs> but no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We have good volunteers. But uh, Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, if you, if you make a decision to follow me, if you make a decision to enlist... It's life changing. What's he tell you? Hate your mom, hate your dad, hate your brother, hate your sister. That one's not too hard. Um, hate your neighbor. I'm just kidding. Hate your neighbor, hate your friend. And again, he's not talking hate. We've discussed that already. He's talking about love me so much it looks like hate, right? He says, pick up your cross daily. Follow me. I don't have anywhere to lay my head. You're still going to follow me out to nowhere, not knowing what you're heading into. Enlisting for the cause of Christ and serving the King of Kings, let me tell you something. It's life-changing. It's life-changing. It's a life-altering commitment. That life-altering commitment requires full devotion. It's a personal pledge that I'm going to allow Jesus Christ to be the leader and the Lord of my life. I'm certain there's many today that would say, I've made that decision. It was the best decision I've ever made in my life. Because here's what I found out. When I have control, I mess up. When I have control, I go the wrong way. But man, when the Holy Spirit has control and Christ has control, man, I'm spitting all over the place this morning. I'm glad you guys are all back that far. Hey, things go right when he has control. I love our teenagers down here in the second row. Isn't that great? I'm going to come and preach here for just a minute. <laughs> Chris has got his shield. He's okay. So you guys are in the spit section now. But no, I, won't, I won't come spit on you. But hey, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We need a big curtain right here. <laughs> I want you to think about it just for a minute. You have to voluntarily and willingly enlist in the military today to reach veteran status. Okay, you have to be a soldier. Same thing's true with the service of the king. We have to enlist. The first step to becoming spiritual uh, 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 military veteran is enlisting. The first step, spiritual vet veteran, uh, uh, enlisting. Military, it's life changing. You can ask the guys who were up here on the stage just a minute ago, it's life changing. Spiritually speaking, it's life-changing. Paul says, Timothy, hey, there's a battle. We're in a war. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the rules of darkness of this world. Ta pay attention, Timothy. Be prepared. And the first thing you have to do, Timothy, is enlist. Christian, I challenge this morning, if you haven't enlisted to serve the Lord, enlist today. Amen? Just, just get busy. Just look for things. What can I do? Where can I volunteer? Where can I plug in? Give me something to do, preacher, and I'll do it. Just enlist. How can I tell people about Christ? Enlist. Enlist. The second word we see the Apostle Paul teach young Timothy is the word endure. Endure. 
endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I think of our American soldiers in every branch of the military, and you can ask them, the ones that were just up here, boy, they had a lot to endure. Had a lot to endure. <laughs> Not at the least the grueling physical punishment during basic training. I guarantee you not a one of them says, I wish I could go back. <laughs> Physical hardships, emotional strain, separation from family, anxiety, having to deal with other people maybe you don't exactly get along with, but they're part of your group. The rigidity of the structure and the, the time schedule and the strain of military life. The anger personified in many a ranking officer. Think about it. You talk about having to endure some things. That's our veterans. By the way, some of them had to endure a bunch of garbage when they came home. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And some are still enduring a bunch of garbage today for, for, for putting their life on the line. They're still not being treated properly in many ways and areas. That's some, en that's some enduring. I read about the Air Force Major. How many Air Force did we have in here? I had four or five. All right. Terry's. They had the best food, right? Is that is the Air Force that did? Yeah, okay, I thought so. We were talking about that one day. I thought that's what you said. I heard about the Air Force major, and he was promoted to colonel, and he was getting into his new office and getting things all set up there in his new office and his routine and all that. And first morning in his new office, an airman, just a common airman, knocked on his door, asked to speak to him. And the colonel, feeling the urge to impress the, the young man with his new office, picked up his phone and began talking. And he said, yes, yes, sir, general. Yes, sir, thank you. Yes, in the morning I'll pass that information on to the president. Yes, sir, yes, sir, goodbye. And he hung up. He turned to the airman and said, now what do you want? And he said, oh, nothing important, sir. I'm just here to hook up your phone. <laughs> Endure. <laughs> Endure. Militarily. You have to endure to be a veteran. You know, the same thing is true spiritually speaking. Paul tells Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Nobody said the Christian life would be easy. And if somebody told you that, they lied to you, okay? It's not a bed of roses. It's difficult. It's hard. There are, there are, there are difficulties we face and persecutions we face, hardships we face. Uh, again, 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 more, I think, coming in the future. It's troubling. We live in a country where uh, Christians don't experience some of the hardships they do in third world countries. But Paul experienced his share of hardships. Again, flogged, beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, so on and so forth. But even in America, we do have some hardships as Christians that we have to endure. Again, just, just stop for just a minute and, and, and ask yourself the question. What does government truly feel about God? What does our, what our, what our media, our press truly feel about God? You think about society in general and the attack that has been on God for the last 20 or 30 years. That's only going to get worse, friends. And we have to learn to endure those things. Uh, too many Christians, you know, cut bait, tuck their tail and run when it gets hard. And Paul tells Timothy, don't you dare, young man. Don't you dare. You endure. You go through the hardships. You struggle with the pain. You fight for what's right. Stand tall and stand proud. James reminds us to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. How many of you would like patience this morning? <laughs> How many of you need patience this morning? <laughs> well, to get patience, guess what? You go through trials. I don't like that. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what the Bible teaches. As good soldiers of Jesus Christ, we have to endure. We have to keep the faith. We have to praise God even in the midst of our struggles. We enlist. We endure. By the way, Christian, and again, I'm just going to say this. And you can get mad at me if you want. That's fine. I'm, I'm out of position right now in my life. I'm, I'm fine with that. I've got broad shoulders. If our election stands the way it is right now, expect hardships to follow. I'm not, I, I'm not a prophet. <laughs> Jay and I, we discussed a little bit here. It, it's coming. You see, when the direction of a nation changes and the direction of the people involved change to a, to a wicked, vile culture, 
it will eventually affect the church. And I believe there's probably a time coming where they're going to tell the church, shut the doors. Shut the doors, it's not safe for y'all. And that's when Christians have to make, make, make a decision. And Christians have to decide whether to stand and fight or whether to roll over and play dead. Endure. It ain't easy, but we've got to learn to endure. Our veterans endured a lot in the military. Christians, be ready to endure and be ready to endure a lot. Endure. The third word we see is this. After we enlist and, 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 and endure, we engage. We engage. General Sherman said this one time. You don't know the horrible aspects of war. I've been through two wars and I know. I've seen cities and homes in ashes. I've seen thousands of men lying on the ground. Their dead faces looking up at the skies. I tell you, war is hell. While I understand the sentiment, I don't think war is anything near what hell is really like. But I understand what he is saying. I've never experienced the horrible aspects of war. I hope that I never have to. I have great respect for those that did. If you're a veteran and you actually were in the trenches, hey, God bless you even more. Amen. Uh, what, what a battle they faced. And those men and women who uh, served during peacetime are great. But man, even during peacetime, they had to prepare for wartime. The training exercises, the combat practice, all those types of things. They have to stay sharp and vigilant, ready to go to war at any minute. You know, I want you to think about that this morning as Christians. Too many Christians today have fallen asleep in the battle. Too many Christians are no longer engaged in the war. Whether I like it or not, whether I agree with it or not, whether I want it or not, we are in a war, period. And it's not against each other, friends. It's not against the church up the road. It's against Satan himself. It's against wickedness and evil. It's against the secular humanistic worldview. We're in, we're in a battle. We can do two things. We can sit and watch and do nothing or we can engage. Christians, I want you to engage. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Christian Paul reminds us as good soldiers of Christ, we have to prepare to engage in the spiritual battle. We battle temptation daily. Amen. And we probably lose to temptation a whole lot more than we should. Engage. Engage. Defend your faith with reason. Defend your faith with precision. Defend your faith with the very word of God, which is the foundation of our faith. Don't be afraid to stand up for Jesus, publicly or personally. Amen. Don't be afraid to take a stand for Christ. God is counting on us to take captives. You say, what do you mean? He, he, he's telling us to take captive. First of all, we surrender our mind to him. We give that to him captive. And then he wants us to teach others to do the same. With gentleness and love and respect, of course. In the Lord's army, we don't kill our enemies. We make them our allies. Amen. We, we convert them. Amen. We teach them about Christ so they too can enlist and engage in the battle. In the Lord's army, uh, we aren't fighting alone. I want you to be encouraged in that. Like, like Mona saying this morning. Uh, we have got somebody with us in every aspect of the battle. Every step we take, everywhere we go. As soldiers have a squad or a platoon or a company, they depend on each other. I read on the back of that coin, they don't leave people behind. They stick together. Hey, church, aren't you glad that we aren't alone in the engaging in the battle? Not only does Christ stand with us, we stand with each other. When you cry, I cry. When you rejoice, I rejoice. When you hurt, I hurt. When you love, I love. When you pray, I pray. We're a team. We're a squad. <laughs> we're, we're a group. We're a platoon. Engage. I think too many Christians are sitting on the sidelines saying, well, I'll pray about it because God's in control and do what he wants. And he is in control and he does do what he wants. But sometimes we need to put feet to our, to our prayers. And we need to get busy taking the battle to the enemy. I think sometimes we sit back and we wait. How's he going to attack us next? How about going after him? How about taking off the head of the serpent? Amen? Take the war to him. Engage in the battle. Boy, too many Christians in America, they're sitting by just idly waiting. 
Get engaged in the battle. I'm going to tell you something. I wasn't in the military, but I guarantee you if that military platoon had to go into battle and one guy stood back and said, I'm just going to sit and watch. You guys go ahead. <laughs> you got this. Whatever happens, happens. God's in control. That dude probably from his own platoon ain't going to live to see tomorrow. And besides having to worry about the enemy. <laughs> why do we do it as Christians? Well, whatever happens, happens. Hey, why don't we... Why don't, why don't we pray down some fire from heaven once in a while? Why don't we get a hold of the power of God once in a while? And get, get, take the battle to the enemy. Let's engage. David Dykes, a Baptist preacher from Texas, he shared an amazing story during World War II. Soldiers were often given Bibles to carry into battle with them. He said one veteran showed him his Bible one time and it had a bullet hole from a German bullet and it punctured the Bible and it went all the way through to Psalm 91 and stopped. The bullet as he looked at it seemed to mark the verse Psalm 91 11. The Bible says this, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. I can go after the enemy because Christ is within me. I can't do it in my own strength, but I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Satan is bigger, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm a wimp, but I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Engage the enemy because he's promised protection. He's promised to go with us. He's promised to be there with us in the battle and fight with us or for us. Engage. Engage. Never be afraid to engage. You say, well, if I talk to my friend about Christ, they may stop liking me. Engage! Jesus is coming back soon. People need Jesus. But if it's my co-worker. I mean, that'll make it awkward at work if I tell them about Jesus and they don't... Friend, let me tell you something. They're not rejecting you if they reject. They're rejecting Jesus Christ. Engage. Engage in love. Engage in concern and true compassion. Engage. If God is for us, who can be against us? In order to be a veteran, we must enlist, we must endure, we must engage. Lastly, lastly, the last E is don't get entangled. Don't get entangled. The end of our verse there that we read, he said, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Entangled. I heard about the new recruit. He had just, just recently joined the Navy, and shortly after joining the Navy, he went to one of his officers for a pass so he could attend a wedding. The officer gave him the pass, and he informed the young military man as he was leaving. He said, now remember, you have to be back to base at 7 p.m. Sunday. The young Navy man looked at him and said, but you don't understand, sir. I'm in the wedding. The Navy officer looked at him and said, you don't understand. You're in the Navy. When you serve that flag right there, you are expected to completely commit to your country. Nothing prevents you from performing your duties faithfully and serving your country faithfully. When you serve that flag over here, the same expectations are in place. Christ expects you to serve that flag, to serve him faithfully and be committed to him and to his kingdom. Don't allow anything from, uh, stop you from doing his will. Unfortunately, countless Christians, after coming to faith in Christ, get entangled with the affairs of this world. Other things become more important to them than Christ. Uh, Jesus told the story of the very same thing, actually, Luke chapter 8. He talked about a farmer who went out and spread seeds. Remember, in, in verse 14 it says, uh, Some fell on the thorns. And who were the thorns? They which have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to, perfect, to perfection. You see, when, when, when I get entangled with the affairs of the world and the affairs of the flesh and things and materialism and all that type of thing, what happens is this. I'm not effective for Christ. I'm the thorns he's talking about in Luke. Uh, the seed has fallen, I've taken it in, I'm saved, I'm born again. I may even be trying to live for Christ, but when I get entangled, I become ineffective. 
Be careful about allowing things to distract you from Christ. Paul said in this, Philippians chapter 3, 8, I count all things for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Folks, when's the last time as a Christian we said, forget things. That's just, that's just a pile of dung. If I can win people to Christ, that's what matters. If I can tell one person about Jesus who died to save him and shed his blood and took their place and paid their penalty and rescued them from an eternity in hell and gave them an eternity in heaven. If I could just tell one person, forget everything I own, it's worth it. But we get entangled. We get entangled. There's two types of freedoms, folks, embodied in two flags. Again, I say many thanks to our veterans who have served this flag and have given us political freedoms, if you will, which allow us to worship our Creator, give us freedoms that we desperately need. I also say thank you Christian veterans who have stood, who have fought, who have lived right, who have declared evil as evil and right as right, who have stood the test of time, who have taken a bold stance for Jesus Christ, no matter what anybody else. I say thank you Christian veterans for serving that flag right there. Surrender completely to Christ. Today I challenge you with this. I'm done. Will you strive to be a veteran for Christ? The flag over here. You've got to enlist, okay? Nobody can force you. You've got to be willing. You've you got to endure. You're going to endure some things. I'm not going to, I'm not going to paint you a pretty picture. Serving God is tough. It's difficult, all right? You gotta endure. You gotta engage. Take the battle to the. You, you know what? I've played a lot of sports in my life, and you know the one, the one greatest thing I've learned about sports. It's much more fun to be on the court, on the field, whatever, than sitting on the bench watching. Now again, you need a breather every now and then. I get that, but man, I'd rather be in the game participating than on the sidelines cheering. Go team! There's no I in team, Pastor. No, but there's a me. Amen. <laughs> I want to be out there. Christians, we need to be out there. The, the Christian life is so much better lived and enjoyed and blessed when I'm engaging the enemy. And lastly, Christian, to be a veteran, don't get entangled. I know the world has a lot to offer us. I know. I know there's a lot of distractions. I know there's a lot of burdens and worries and cares. And I know the old, the old wicked one, old smutty face Satan's telling you, but think about your past. You know, there's a reason it's called your past. Because it's in the past. It's under the blood. Your past does not define you. Amen. Live for him today. Don't get entangled. Maybe this morning you are entangled with the cares and the worries of this life. Let me tell you something. It doesn't take much to get untangled. It's just some decisions you have to make. Maybe this morning you're afraid to engage people in spiritual conversation. Let me tell you something. I would rather be embarrassed and trip over my words telling somebody about Jesus than not tell them about Jesus and watch them die and go to hell. Maybe we're struggling with engaging. Maybe endurance is our problem this morning. Maybe you say, well, I've, I used to, but now I... Huh? Maybe it's time to say, I, I'm going to again. I'm going to endure. When the hard times come, I'm going to keep pressing on. Maybe some of you this morning would say this. Well, Pastor, i got to be honest, I haven't even enlisted. <laughs> I haven't even enlisted. Listen, there ain't a sign-up sheet. All right? We do a lot of sign-up sheets for a lot of different things. There ain't a sign-up sheet for enlisting for Christ. Just jump in, man. The water's fine. Jump in both feet. All the way. Let go over your head. It's all right. It's all good. You'll come back out. <laughs> all right? Just like when I baptized them teenagers and I was paid to keep them under longer, I still brought them back out. Amen. Just jump in, man. Enlist. Enlist. Christian, I just want to challenge you this, this, this thought. Spiritual veterans are needed. Again, I thank God for our military veterans, those of you were up earlier. And I'm so thankful for spiritual veterans who have guided me over the course of my life. Let's make it our goal to be a spiritual veteran that does what's right, but then can also lead and guide others to do the same. See, there's a generation following us. You see, hey, adults, I, I hate to break you the news. 
we're on the downside of the hill. Okay? Uh, our, our time's coming. <laughs> There's going to be a time where we're no longer effective for Christ. We're, all, we're, we're put out to pasture. All right? And, and there's, there's, there's a generation and a generation over here and a generation and a generation over there that needs to pick up the mantle. I'm going to tell you something. They're going to struggle to pick up the mantle if we don't present them what it's like to truly be a good soldier. I want to challenge you this morning. Let's be a spiritual veteran. Let's live for Christ. Let's take a stand. And when the going gets tough, let's not tuck tail and run. Let's not close and lock the doors and hide. Let's get busy for Christ. If anything I've learned in 2020 is this. As much as I've been frustrated with the events of it, I've learned this. We have a, no better time in our lifetime to stand and to fight and to represent Jesus Christ than right now. Will you stand? Will you fight? Will you be a spiritual veteran? Father, Lord, this morning I pray you can take what's been presented here. There's just four simple words, but I think they're very important, Lord, important enough to be in the Bible and to Paul to teach Timothy these thoughts. Lord, I pray to, today that we can take these thoughts and truly apply them to our life, spiritually speaking. May we get enlisted to the service of the king. May we endure the hardships that come along with that. Lord, the Bible tells us they hated you. They're going to hate us if we follow you. May we be willing to endure. Lord, help us to engage the enemy. Stand tall, stand firm, stand proud for Jesus Christ. Call evil, evil, and call good, good. May that be us, Lord, I pray. Lord, may we not get entangled with the affairs of this world. May we make a difference in the next generation because of how we live our lives for you today, I pray. Give us that encouragement. Give us this challenge this morning, Lord, to our hearts, we pray. Heads are bowed this morning, eyes are closed. Just a brief invitation. We'll sing here in just a moment. We'll be done. You're here today and you say, Pastor, first of all, I've, I've somewhat enlisted because I'm saved. I'm born again. I can enter the battle and endure and all those things because I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. Uh, Pastor, I'm not trusting my baptism or my works or even my church membership to get me to heaven, but I have a relationship with Christ and he's part of my life and I know that for sure. And if I were to die right now, I'm going to heaven and I know that. Because of Christ and what he's done for me. Would you do this? Nobody is looking this morning. Would you just slip your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. If I were to die, I know I'm going to heaven. I'm a child of God this morning. Would you do that? Just slip your hand. I want to rejoice with you. Amen. Good, good. Hands all over. You put them down. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you'd say this. I, I, I couldn't raise my hand. I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure I know that Christ you're talking about as my personal Savior. I mean, I'd like to go to heaven. I'm hoping, you know, but, but I'm just not sure. Could I do this? Can I just pray for you? I'm not going to call your name or embarrass you. Could I pray for you? I'm not sure if I were to die, I'd go to heaven. Would you pray for me, preacher? Nobody is looking. Would you slip your hand up, slip it right back down? I just want to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your honesty. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm just not sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll pray for you in just a moment. One last challenge question, if you will. Hey, Christian, will you stand for Christ? Will you enlist, engage, endure, and avoid entanglements to be a spiritual veteran? Man, this world needs us more than ever. This church, this town, this city is in need of the gospel and in need of hope and in need of help. And we've got the answer. Will you get involved? Will you stand for right? Will you endure persecution? I won't ask you to raise your hand this morning. Maybe as we sing our closing invitation song. Of course, the altar is always open. You can kneel here. You can stay right where you're seated and pray. But maybe during the invitation, you need to take care of something God spoke to your heart about. Maybe you've struggled to enlist, and you need to say, I need to get busy. Uh, maybe you've quit and struggled with endurance. Fix it. Maybe you need to be willing to get more engaged. Or maybe there's some entanglements you need to let loose of. I don't know the need. But I have an invitation for that reason. You can do business with God if you need to this morning. Father, bless our invitation now as we close our service Lord, decisions need to be made this morning. Help us to make them and surrender whatever we need to surrender to, to the King of Kings. Lord, we pray. Again, Lord, we ask you to be with these couples that said, I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. Lord, I pray today they would uh, realize that uh, it's such a simple thing just to turn their heart over to you. And Lord, may they even today uh, find the faith and the strength and the courage to even step out of their seat, grab the person next to them and say, I, I want to know I'm going to heaven. Would you go with me? 
And Lord, if they'll come, we'll take the Bible. A lady will deal with a lady, a man with a man. We'll tell them how they can know for sure from the Bible, not from this church, but from the Bible, how they can know heaven's their home. Lord, give them strength and courage this morning to know that you died to save them. You love them very much. And Lord, if they were the only person on earth, you would have died for them. And may they trust you and accept you today, Lord, I pray. Lord, other decisions that need to be made, maybe this morning, help us to make them. And we'll give you the honor and the glory for it. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Would you go ahead and stand together this morning if you're able to? We'll close with just a verse of a song or two. How I belong to Jesus. As we sing this morning, the invitation is open. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. Let's sing one more verse, Frank. Just one more. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to belongs to me Thank you, not for the years of time alone but for eternity amen amen we're going to go ahead and be dismissed here in just a moment with a word of prayer if you have a visitor's card for me i'll be back there in the lobby you'll be happy to meet you and give you your gift uh, and uh, we'll see you out there. Junior Church, they're probably done. If they're not trickling over here when we dismiss, it looks like they went to the Sunday School building there, so you can go track them down, or you can leave without them, and we'll track you down. <laughs> Trust me, all right? But anyways, uh, so thank you for being with us and worshiping today, and hopefully we can take the challenge and use it in our hearts and in our lives today. Bob, uh, would you close us in a word of prayer, please?